started my project on life and sustainability. Um, these are just some of the pictures that I've taken along the way that you'll also see in your handouts as I go. Um, as you can see, there's tadpoles. Um, in the picture, they're eating blood worms, which is what most of their diet is made of. Um, there's also a picture um, of the bean plants that I grew um, and the leaves wilting on it as I adjusted the acidity of the soil. Um, there's also a little picture of a snail embryo, which was kind of a mistake that came up along the way, but it was pretty cool to watch. Um, so who I am and where I'm going, obviously I'm a senior at ELHS. Um, I'm a supervisor over at A.W. Browns. I love my job, I love what I do. I've been there for two years. Um, these are just some pictures. Um, I got placed with a little puppy for a day at work, which was the best thing ever. Um, I've also had people bring in um, baby animals that were left behind or the mother was killed, um, and I've taken it into my hands to kind of help them and rehome them to the best that I can. Um, so in this picture up here, it's a baby bunny that was obviously wild, and I did return it to the wild, um, but I stayed up for quite a few nights feeding a kitten milk every two hours. Um, and then there's also my little birds. They're um, green-cheeked conures. Um, they're two months old, and I, it's my job to teach them how to talk and how to um, respond to human interaction. One of them's going home today, so it's very exciting. Um, I'm UConn class of 2018, pathobiology major um, with a double in animal science. I'm hoping to go into para-veterinary studies after, which is a more research-oriented um, area of the study. Um, not exactly sure in specifics on that. I obviously have a while to go through that. Um, and obviously, I mean, I love animals. It's my pride and joy. Um, I love to be outside. I love to see the wildlife. It's not all the little creatures inside, but I just enjoy my time spent with them. So the beginning of my experiment, I researched last semester um, northern leopard frogs, which are native here. Um, my whole plan was to get them as eggs, um, have a control group that was kept in completely neutral, um, like a neutral temperature, acidity, um, ammonia, nitrates, nitrites, uh, phosphates. And then I was going to have experimental groups um, with a lowered pH to show the effects of um, acid rain. Um, there was going to be a lowered ammonia, um, higher nitrites, stuff like that. Uh, unfortunately, there was a tadpole shortage across the country, which was not <laughs> anticipating, but I made it work. Uh, so those are kind of the complications with it. I did end up getting the tadpoles, obviously. I just wasn't able to experiment with them the way I wanted to. So sustainability, um, which is what I was working on while I was trying to figure out this whole tadpole thing. Um, you can look through your pamphlet. Um, these are pictures of the tank that I set up in Ms. Rainier's room. Um, the whole point of sustainability is balancing the nitrates and the nitrites and the ammonia. Um, so what you do is you add in the water, obviously. You have a plant um, that produces nitrates, um, as you can see in the graph. Um, same with the animals. Um, and then as the nitrates go into the water, it's ammonia first, um, which is very toxic to animals, um, plants, um, and then the nitrifying bacteria actually breaks it down into nitrates, <coughs> which can still be toxic to the animals. Um, and then as the nitrifying bacteria continues to break it down, it turns into nitrates, um, which is then broken down by more bacteria and it's released back into the atmosphere. Um, so that's the nitrogen cycle for you. Um, but in my experiment, I started with a empty 30 gallon tank um, I built, I mean, everything in there I built except for the filter. Um, so I made pegs, I made um, kind of a board that sat on top of it with screen. Um, so I planted some grass, the grass grew, I put in some water. Um, the last picture on the first page is actually the roots going down to the water. Um, and then if you flip the page, eventually I got plants in there, I got some driftwood in there. There's a picture of the plants that I chose. I chose everything that is similar to being in the environment um, where the tadpoles would naturally live. Um, then you see the tadpoles finally got them um, not too long ago actually. 
Um, so they're eating the bloodworms now, which is the first picture that was on my original slide. Uh, they turned into frogs, obviously. It was fun to watch. It was great. Um, and then my last picture is just one of the frogs up on top of the filter. So that was the sustainability portion of my project. Um, the effects of increasing acidity. Uh, so what actually is pH? It's per hydrogen. That's what it stands for. For me at work, it was always something that I just tested in someone's water. I knew that it killed fish, didn't really know why. Uh, after taking AP Bio, I know a lot more. Um, so the lower the pH, the more acidic. The higher the pH, the more basic. Um, lower pH actually has more hydrogen, um, and that's what causes trouble to um, animals, plants. Um, it's absorbed into the cells, and then from there the cells can't break it down the right way, um, and it kind of causes chaos, um, and eventually death if it's too low. Uh, so my experiment, I did change it. Um, this is all in your handout. Um, so I had two different groups of plants. Um, like roughly 20 plants um, in each container in the first container. Um, I had completely neutral soil. I grew the plants, let them grow a little bit, and then as they got older, um, I started misting them and watering them with different pHs to show just the effect of the rain. Um, you can look through your packet. Um, eventually, as you see, they got very sad and wilted and died. Um, except for the ones in the back, the ones near the wall were the ones kept with a neutral pH. They were fine, healthy, <coughs> kept growing. Um, and then in my other experiment, I changed the um, pHs of the soil. I didn't change it of the, of the water. Um, so I grew them in there. This is exactly what that is. I don't know why it came out so blurry. Um, but the farthest back was um, the pH of 7. Then I went to 6.5, 6, 5.5, 5, 6, 5 and 5. Um, that's on the second page of the effects of acidity. Um, you can see the two experiments lined up together. Um, the one with the most plants um, was my first experiment. Um, that's kind of them as they were dying. Um, okay. And then the second picture, um, you can actually see where the seeds died um, and started to mold. They couldn't grow in such a low pH. Um, which is what's happening with our soil now, is acid rain keeps falling, it's just changing everything in the soil. Um, so it's not just the rain itself, it's the other factors it's um, affecting. Uh, and you can see I did have a few that grew where they weren't supposed to grow. Science, it never really does what you want it to do. Um, so my results of the experiment were just that the effects of pH, it lowering, kills everything. Um, and that's something that scientists are working on now. Um, but it's something to be careful of with things that you throw out, um, even medications um, being excreted from us and being put back into the environment. It's causing all different changes on organisms um, that may not be direct, um, but eventually it will be. So it's something that really interested me, and it makes me a little bit more self-aware of what I'm doing to the environment. Two minutes okay. Um, the fun stuff, nematode segmented worms, snail eggs. These are my nematodes. They were very hard to take a picture of in the microscope, so bear with me. This is his head. Um, right here is actually his mouth. I know it's hard to see, and that is the other half of him. Um, it was very cool. It was very exciting. Um, and then I have a video of one of the snails. Um, so right up here, I know it's kind of hard to see, um, his heart's actually beating. Uh, it was very exciting at first. Miss Rainier and I thought they were tadpole eggs, but as time went on, they grew shells, so we kind of clued in there. Um, but this is what we watched every day under the microscope until they finally hatched. It was very interesting, to say the least. Um, we had a lot of fun with it. Um, and then this is the segmented worm that I found. Um, that took me a very long time to be able to actually get him on camera because he liked the lower lights. He was not happy to be put under the light. Um, but you can actually see, uh, I wish it was clearer up on the board, um, but 
but you can see all of his internal organs. He has a fully developed um, digestive tract um, from what we could see. Sorry about the camera. It was very hard to balance the light with the microscope. Um, but from what we can see, he's not a parasite. He wasn't arming the eggs. He was just kind of living with them. Um, and he did go back in the tank after. But just kind of some of the cool stuff that I found very interesting. And I know Miss Rainier loved. Um, so you can kind of see everything going down the body. That's really it for my presentation. Did you have any questions? Megan, um, you had said that uh, some of these things you knew about sort of just on the surface level, and then it was AP Bio that kind of kicked it all in for mm -hmm. you. Um, what, uh, sort of what ignited that in AP Biology? Did you expect that going in? Or? Kind of. I mean, growing up, I was very sick. Um, I was in and out of the hospital. I had five knee surgeries, so I was never really out playing with all the kids. But I'd sit in the grass and kind of watch everything and watch the bugs fly the flowers and, you know, wonder why they're doing that stuff. So I took AP Bio, bio knowing that I was into science, um, knowing that's, I mean, where my career was going to be. Um, but as I took the class, I had no idea I was going to be as interested as I am. Um, so it was very fun. <laughs> Anything else? How long did it take for to go from a tadpole to the frog? Well, the reason I chose the northern leopard frogs um, was because they had the shortest time as a tadpole, and I did not want to leave Miss Frenier with tadpoles over the summer. <laughs> I feel very bad. Um, so for them, I mean, once they are out of the egg and they become a fully developed tadpole, it takes about five to eight weeks for them to fully um, change over. Oh. I released them over at Heritage Park. Um, I did have three that were still a tadpole. Um, but they had legs and everything, so they swam off. They were happy. <laughs> Bigger place to be. Uh, no question <clears throat> for me, just a comment. Having Just having watched you do this throughout the semester, uh, I just want to let you know that I'm unbelievably proud of you, not just in the work that you did for this particular project, but in watching you over the last three years. And, and that I've worked with you and kind of where you're headed now. I know you're off to do great things, so not just a great job on this, but outstanding job since you've started here at East Long Meadow High School, and, and um, you're leaving a great legacy here, not just academically, but with who you are as a person as well. So I'm super proud of you. You did an awesome job. Thank you.